Classes are back in session. And there's a slight change with a popular UAC event. Stay tuned, Troy Trojan Vision News starts now. From the High Definition Production Center of Troy University's broadcast and digital network, at Troy, Alabama's international university, this is Troy Trojan Vision News. Hello and welcome to Troy Trojan Vision News for January 7th, 2016. I'm Samantha Charles. And I'm Jordan Elston. Thank you for joining us this evening. Yesterday marked the first day of classes for the spring semester at Troy University. This meant leaving behind the lazy days of the holiday break and getting back to work for Troy students. Joshua Lee hit the campus to see how students feel about the new semester. The holidays have come and gone and the spring semester is officially here. As many of us are returning from a break filled with Christmas cheer, one Trojan took his cheer to new heights and climbed to the top of more than just a Christmas tree. I actually went and visited the highest point in Alabama like for the first time ever. Uh, it was great, amazing. I saw like beautiful scenery, like amazing shots. I like climbed on the rock and like the highest rock and yeah, it, it was frightening but it was fun. I'm really excited, um, mostly because I get to get back into a routine, but um, it's going to be challenging, but I'm excited for it. I feel better uh, mainly because I have a head start and i got all my textbooks together. Um, I'm taking the semester very seriously. Definitely going to hit the library more. I got my work schedule worked out so I can um, actually focus more on school instead of being stuck at Walmart all the time. Uh, you know, it's a fresh start, you know. Um, had a pretty good semester last semester, you know. I'm looking forward to making all A's this semester, you know. It's like my goal, so. With new classes and new faces, a few Trojans share what they are most excited for as they spring into this new semester. Goals for this semester, make a 4.0. Get my GP up all the way up to a 3.0. You know, first goal, make all A's, you know. Try to make the Dean's list, you know, just have something to shoot for, you know. So, uh, another goal. Mm. Gotta get more money, man. Gotta make this money, man. You know. You know. I'm gonna graduate. <laughs> That's my goal. Joshua Lee, Troy, Trojan Vision News. Troy students don't have to wait long until their first break from classes. They'll get out on Monday, Monday January 18th, for the MLK holiday. Each month, Troy's University Activities Council offers students a chance to see movies on a budget with the popular Dollar Movie Night at Continental Cinemas. However, starting this semester, these nights are being scaled back to once a month, raising some concern among students. Nathaniel Rodriguez has the story. Cinematic experience at a low price. That's what students at Troy University enjoy about Dollar Movie Night, but now students will have to enjoy this event only once a month. The change came about due to disagreements over the University Activities Council's contract, leading it to reduce the amount of dollar movie nights for this semester. Despite the fewer opportunities students will have to watch the movie for a dollar, UAC President Khadija Torbert believes the turnout will not be negatively affected. Actually, I think we may even get a bigger turnout than normal because it kind of forces the students to come to one dollar movie night since there is only once a month. So I think it's going to be more than we expected. Students were upset over the decision due to the importance of dollar movie night to them. The reduction in nights has caused some students to change their process of choosing a movie. I mean, I have to go with my favorite. I can't go with my top two, you know. So, but I mean, it may help me out in school, get better grades, because I won't come to the movies as much. Despite facing some backlash over the decision, Torbert is pleased with students' willingness to help bring back the old schedule. Of course, since this is probably our most important and um, out there event that students go to, I've gotten like a little bit of um, criticism from it, um, just from like, oh, why is it been taken away, or is there any way we can do something, like a petition or something? And I'm like, wow, that's so awesome that students actually want to sign a petition to actually get Dollar Movement Night again, so I thought that was a good thing. Nathaniel Rodriguez, Troy Trojan Mission News. To make up for the space left by the reduced movie nights, the UAC is planning several additional events, including ice skating, dodgeball, and a visit from a hypnotist. And Jordan, many around the world have questions after it appears that North Korea successfully tested a nuclear device. That's right, Samantha. And Antonio Reese gets an explanation of what the test may really mean from a Troy University professor well-versed in the situation on the Korean Peninsula. This week, the world took notice as it looked as if North Korea successfully tested a nuclear device. What does this mean for the international community? 
Choi University lecturer Daniel Pinkston teaches international relations in Seoul, South Korea, and his first-hand knowledge of the tensions in the area. Pinkston gives us his take on the test, including the possibility that a mistaken translation is making some believe that the device is deadlier than it possibly is. And another possibility that I'm looking into is some uh, linguistic um, differences. And if we look at the, the Korean report of what they said they, they did, it's slightly different. And uh, the technical term for a fusion explosion is different, and they didn't use that in the uh, Korean report. So that's one possibility. It could just be the, the words that they use, and there's some confusion over that, and they didn't misrepresent at all. Pinkston says the test could simply be a display of technological progress and not a provocation, as some may believe. My gut feeling is that it's probably directed more for internal or domestic purposes, uh, but that's often overlooked in um, international society. Most people are looking for other reasons or saying it's directed at Obama or the United States or something else, but I don't think that's likely the case. Overall, Pinkston feels that North Korea is not preparing for some sort of offensive, as it would not be successful at this time. My, my greatest worry as far as now, is there being any... Uh, troop movements or plans to attack. I don't see North Korea uh, initiating uh, a war like they did in June 1950 <clears throat> because they would uh, lose that war and they know that. So it, as long as the strong deterrence posture is in, in place, I think uh, we'll just have to keep living with this for some time to come. Antonio Reese, Troy, Trojan Vision News. Pinkston is a lecturer at Troy University's Yongsong Garrison site in Seoul, South Korea. And now taking a look at news from around the state. Montgomery City Council has voted to allow ride hailing companies such as Uber to begin operating within the city. The mayor says he expects the decision to attract young people and businesses. Federal prosecutors in Alabama say the state's probate judges must obey the U.S. Supreme Court's decision on gay marriage, regardless of an administrative order issued by Alabama Supreme Court Justice Roy Moore. Moore said yesterday that the Alabama Supreme Court never lifted a march directed to probate judges to refuse licenses to gay couples. And Jefferson County officials say they're working to repair storm sirens that failed when a tornado hit the area on Christmas Day. County Commission President Jimmy Stevens says maintenance projects on outdoor sirens had been repeatedly delayed in the past months because of the county's financial issues. Still to come on Troy Trojan Vision News, the men's and women's basketball teams are in action in Atlanta tonight. William McCarthy has the latest in sports. Plus, some parts of California are drying out after recent storms. More on that after the break. California is starting to dry out after a series of El Nino related storms, flooded roads and triggered mudslides. I'm Chris Martinez in Newhall, California. The latest coming up. Looks like it's done. Don't let salmonella get funky with your chicken. On average, one in six Americans will get a foodborne illness this year. You can't see these microbes, but they might be there. So learn well, the right actually... temperature to cook each type of meat. Keep your family safe at foodsafety.gov. Now, the latest in Trojan sports on Troy Trojan Vision News. Troy women's basketball is in action in Atlanta against Georgia State. The Trojans are coming into the game with a win against the defending Sun Belt Conference champion, Arkansas State Little Rock, last Saturday. Senior standout Ashley Beverly Kelly led the way with 30 points, 8 rebounds, 7 assists, and 3 steals. Head coach Shannon Rigby gives praise to her senior guard. 
Really, the camera probably just needs to go over this one over here on my right. Ashley Beverly, Ke Beverly Kelly with 30 points tonight, eight rebounds. Um, just a tremendous game. But something that's not on the stat sheet is getting the team set up to run those sets and doing them correctly. And the most important thing she did all night was that last offensive rebound, which really iced the game for us. Troy women's basketball is in action playing, playing against Georgia State. You can listen to the game on 94.7 FM w, WTBF. The word frustrating comes, comes to mind for the men's basketball team after dropping two closed conference games at home. The team prepares for their game tonight against Georgia State in Atlanta, and they're, and they're looking to break out of a mini slump that has, that, that has, that has, seen, the, that has seen the team drop five of its last six games. Head coach Phil Cunningham tells us how close his team has been during these stretch, stretch, stretch of games. It's tough. It's tough when it's being, you know, when you go to Ole Miss and, and lose in overtime to a team that's one of the hottest teams in SEC. Then you come back at home and control the game against Arkansas State for 35 minutes and lose it literally in the last minute and a half when, when we had the ball with a minute and a half to go and a three point lead. And then you come back in the game today, bounce back, and we didn't let Wednesday affect us. I mean, we didn't come out pouting, head down. We came out and we fought, have a six point lead at halftime or a five point lead, and then, and then just have an opportunity. Uh, and get so many good looks in the second half and not knock them, you know, not knock them down. That's frustrating. Once again, Troy battles Georgia State in Atlanta following the women's game at 6.30 p.m. and it will be televised on ESPN3. The men's tennis team kicks, kicks, kicks off their season ranked 63rd in the nation in the ITA Collegiate Rankings. This is the same position the Trojans finished last season with a 25-7 and record. Troy is the defending Sunbelt Sun Conference champions and is the only team ranked in the Sunbelt Conference. The Troy football program grew a little today with a name that might seem familiar to the Trojan Nation. Troy football head coach Neil Brown announced today the addition of Elba High School quarterback Ramsey Rigby to the, prog to the program. If the last name sounds familiar, well, it's because Rigby is the son of Troy women's basketball coach Chanda Rigby. Ramsey was, named, was recently named to the Alabama Sports was was recently named to the Alabama Sports Writers Association 2A All State First Team after he led Elba to a state to a state championship this past season. He threw 30 touchdowns and and, and just threw five interceptions over the course of the season. He led he led all he led all of the Wiregrass with 2,236 passing yards and completed 70.3 percent of his passes.